has come from an idea in someone's head. And we need to be reminded about that sometimes because it's absolutely mind-blowing. And I think your brain is the sexiest organ in your body. And that's because our human brain allows us to do something that the animals around us can't do. And that is to think up an idea in the future and then come up with a plan to make that idea happen. And that's incredibly empowering. And my background has been television and varied. But now I use my creative brain to come up with novelty gifts. And I've sold over a million, about a million and a half novelty gifts worldwide now. And I'll give you a few examples. Um, this here is the Martin Luther King. Um, <laughs> not highbrow. Um, on the back it says, I have a clean. And um, this one is my sound machine. And this came from the idea of wanting to be able to live my own sitcom. So it's got 16 different sounds on it. And now you can always have applause or laughter wherever you go. Some of the, some of the sounds are rude. And it's done very well. And this here is the Sergeant Peppermill. Um, he's a sergeant, he's a peppermill. Sergeant Peppermill, simple. So today I'm going to be talking about ways that you can have great ideas. And here's the first one. It's a simple technique. Take something already existing and just twist it slightly. And often you'll get a completely new idea. So I saw these candles in Marks and Spencers. Now I was queuing up for my egg and cress sandwiches because I'm very middle class. And I thought, okay, yes, it's a simple idea. You put them on the cake and they spell a phrase. And lots of other companies were doing these sort of candles with anodyne phrases like happy birthday and crank congratulations. So all I did was I took this idea and I twisted it slightly and I found a brilliant partner company and we found a factory in Taiwan and so we made our own version. So the first one we made was Lost Count. Then we made 21 again and there they are on the cake. And our best seller is these, your old. <laughs> and your world have sold a quarter of a million units worldwide. And what's really important about a product like this is, I'm sure you all have ideas like these, but you have to look at the attention to detail. And so instead of just saying to Taiwan, make a backboard, you have to be very specific. You have to say, make it one millimeter, otherwise it'll come back and it'll be floppy and it won't look good on the shelf or on the euro book. So these details are really important. And I'm constantly coming up with new ideas. And in industry, we see this happening all the time, the phenomenon of twisting something to get new ideas. So the gramophone is taken by Sony and put on somebody's belt, put on your belt, and that becomes the Walkman. And that's a new idea. And then when the media changes to MP3, it then becomes the MP3 player. So this process of iteration is happening all around us. And I had an idea which twisted spectacles and I made my Hydra identity specs and basically this very simple idea, you pop them on and, and when you have a photograph it looks like you're in the special forces. <laughs> so if you want to look like you're an international man or woman of mystery, pop these on, you don't need Photoshop, it's £800, these are £3.99, boom, perfect, really cheap, really effective. Now, I think that when you think differently, you act differently. And in school, there is a lot of emphasis about pass and fail. And in life, there's a lot of emphasis about pass and fail. But I prefer to think of my life like an experiment. And this is a very freeing way, and it might work for you as well. Um, because experiments never, ever fail. You just have a hypothesis, a, a method, a results, and a conclusion. And as long as a scientist is getting results, that is deemed a successful experiment. You can always do another experiment, even if the results don't turn out like you want. So I think it's really freeing that then you'll never fail if you view your life like a series of experiments, because you just keep doing experiments until you get the outcome you want. And often, you'll get an even better outcome, and it'll send you down another alleyway, which is really exciting. So here's the second technique for coming up with a great idea. I love this one break a rule. Now, we're living in 
a certain time in human history, a great time. But a hundred years ago, the rules and the norms in society were very different. And in a hundred years' time, they'll be different as well. So that's really important to remember, that everything around us is just created by humans. So sometimes when you look at a rule, it will dissolve away like tissue paper in the air. So we've got to challenge rules. And I saw something happening which really inspired me. And this is a, a screenshot of eBay. And it shows a phenomenon whereby Linden dollars, which are the currency in Second Life. Now, Second Life, as you might know, is, is an online game. And you go in, you create a character, and it's got a whole world there. Perhaps if you haven't got a first life, maybe that's harsh. <laughs> um, and in Second Life, it has its own currency called Linden dollars. And Linden dollars here are being sold for real money. And then I began to think about how, wow, that's a digital currency being sold for real money. But actually, real money is a confidence trick as well. And I remember this photo when I was 18 and I studied history. I saw this in a, in a history book. And this is a man going to buy a loaf of bread in the Great Depression. Because inflation had gone crazy, that's how much he needed to buy the bread. And I thought, this is shocking in a way, because we work hard for our money, and actually, the money in our pockets could suddenly become worthless if the economy deemed it worthless. So I thought maybe we should all carry gold, because there's only a finite amount of gold, but of course that's impractical, it wear your trousers down or your skirt, so no good. So then I thought, okay, is it illegal to make your own money? And we, we all think maybe, yes, it would be, but actually I looked into it further, and when stores give gift vouchers, that's actually their own money, it's just a piece of paper that is exchanged for products. So I started to draw up my own currency, and here is my first sketch, and here's how it came out in the end. Um, <laughs> this is my one ego banknote, because if you're going to have your own currency, you might as well refer to your healthy self-esteem. And I put lots of imagery from my life around my, my main picture, and the main picture, I asked the, the photographer to take it slightly from below, because if you're a world leader, world leaders will ask the photographer to take it slightly from below because you look more regal. Good tip for you there. And um, on the side, the serial number there is my phone number, so it also doubles as my business card. And um, on the back is my hero, Walt Disney. I worked there as a 16th century gentleman when I was 21, and it changed my life. It opened my eyes to the possibilities of entertainment and capitalism. And I thought, OK, that's fine. It's turned out well. I had it printed on special paper on a special printing press called a Heidelberg Press, which a lot of currency is printed on. But actually, what I really wanted to know was, would people value this? And this is an interesting experiment, which is, the things we do create value in other people's minds, but that value is just a trick of perception. And I thought about how Damien Hirst, he takes a skull and some diamonds, because diamonds are deemed rare and, and valuable, and he made a piece of artwork out of it. And I thought, okay, hold on, stop the bus. What about diamonds themselves? Now, diamonds are quite... They're quite abundant, and so De Beers, one of the companies who, who does diamonds, keeps them back from the market so they don't get flooded, so they, they hold their value. And actually, I think that the most valuable rock on the whole planet is, is moon rock, because not much moon rock is on the planet at the moment. Only the lunar missions that have gone have brought up a, a finite bit of moon rock. So if you really want to show your girlfriend you care, you, you should have a, give her a moon rock ring. Although I'm not sure she'll be impressed, she'd probably like the diamond one better. Sparkly, isn't it? But when I thought about Damien Hirst, he took diamonds worth £5 million and he put them on the skull and he created this amazing artwork, which is stunning or grotesque, depending on your point of view. He then sold it for £50 million. Now, that difference between the five and the 50 is utterly fascinating. And who decides that difference? We do, humans, society does. Someone said that's worth 50 million now that it's like that, but actually the raw materials were worth 5 million. And so I thought, I wonder if I could give my banknote real value. So what I did was I put it on eBay, and remarkably, from day one, it sold. And here it is selling for about 93p, but currently, one ego is, is on average sold for about £1.52. 
which is a better exchange rate than the euro and the dollar. <laughs> which isn't bad for your own currency, is it? Um, I think that this, again, happens all around us. And the idea of breaking rules is interesting. Sometimes when you challenge something, you'll find it just withers away. And the rule of vacuum cleaners was they had to have a bag and they had to suck things up using a vacuum. But of course, an amazing guy called Dyson came along. He invented the cyclone and that now pulls dirt up. To, to the cleaner, and now it's not even called a vacuum cleaner, it's called a Dyson, which is mind-blowing, and he broke that rule. Um, I think this time of our lives is quite incredible, and because of the internet, knowledge is no longer power, and we all know the phrase, knowledge is power. And I think now, because you can get knowledge at the click of a mouse really quickly, the power of knowledge is flattened. And now the real power is the ability to make connections between two separate bits of knowledge that aren't normally put together. So that really is the definition of innovation and creativity. So I think creativity is the new power, and it's an exciting time we live in. And I believe that sometimes in life you need to be inspired in to be inspiring out. And I use triggers in my life. And one of the triggers I use is the racing post. And that's because I think that horses' names are really inspirational. And they often have strange names. If you look at a few there, you might see um, King of Spades. Now, if I'm thinking of a new product or a new business or a new newsletter or even a new way to make a loved one have a great day, I might look at King of Spades and that might send my mind down different alleyways. King, I might think of something to do with the royals. Spades, I might think of something to do with gardening. And so these triggers just send your mind down different alleyways and they're really important. And I was thinking about a viral idea. I wanted to do something viral on the internet. And so I looked at the top one there, which is World Series. And that's a strange name for a horse, but it triggered something in my mind. And I was also looking at Google at the same time. So I thought, World Series, Google, how can I make a different version of Google? So what I did is I made Google Nigeria. And as you can see there, it says, please enter your bank account number, search for inheritance. <laughs> now, I put this up on the net. Within a few hours, 80,000 hits. Really exciting. Not so exciting, a few months later, I got a writ. <laughs> um, there you can see Sheridan Simov versus Google Inc. I'm not sure what the bigger party is, but never mind. Um, a Google stopped me actually having that domain, but I just twisted it slightly, and now it's up on bandsearchengine.net. Fine. So you can always get around things. No worries. Um, I think details make our human hearts sing. And they're a way of emotionally bonding you with either your customers or people around you that you care for. And I saw something amazing, which I think is incredible, which is the FedEx logo. And it was designed by a guy called Lyndon Leader. And he wanted to put some design features into the logo that would make you be bonded to that logo. And that's a strange concept, isn't it, to be bonded to a logo? But what he did was he put a, a hidden arrow in between the E and the X. Can you all see that? So it's a white arrow, which normally perhaps you wouldn't see. And that conveys the idea of giving something from A to B, which is what they do, they deliver. And he also puts in between the E a spoon, because that represents if something can be measured, it can be improved. So now you'll always see the spoon and the hidden arrow, and you'll tell everyone around you, and that has made you bond to a logo, which is mad, isn't it? Um, this is the, now the third way of actually coming up with a great idea. Look at something another industry is doing, and then apply it to your industry. So it might be out of your realm of expertise or even uh, experience, but you just bring it into your own realm and you, you, you then look at it for yourself. So I looked at the publishing industry and I thought, okay, it's very interesting the publishing industry and I've always wanted a bestseller. Now I've written some books, I've written these two books, Ideas Man and Success or Your Money Back. They took me eight years to write. And even though they get great reviews on Amazon, they've never sold in the same volume as my novelty gifts. And I wondered why this was. 
And I really, really wanted a bestseller. And a bestseller is deemed as 10,000 in the publishing industry, 10,000 sales. And so I thought, okay, what can I do? So what I did was I published my next book in nine days flat. And here is my next book. Um, this is What Every Man Thinks About Apart From Sex. And, of course, inside it's completely blank. Um, 200 completely blank pages. And uh, what's wonderful about living today is that no one can tell you no to find a printer on the internet who will print up your books for you. No one can tell you no to open an Amazon account and you're up and running. So it's very, very empowering. So in nine days, I was up and running. I had, I had this for sale, which was incredible. And then I got a little bit of um, news coverage about it. A um, great article in, in a newspaper, Daily Star, laughing all the way to the blank. And I didn't actually see any uprise in sales after that, although I thought it was very exciting that it happened. And I thought there would be more sales. But then the next day, something happened which was wonderful. And, a TV producer saw, saw this article and she said to me, Shed, I like this and I, I produce a morning show, I want you to send the book to us. So I did that and after that I still didn't see a bump in sales, which really surprised me because there's millions of viewers for that. But it's interesting that old media like newspapers and television perhaps are less influential now than new media. And the next day the offline article went online. Same exact copy, same exact story, um, different, tiny bit different photos. And what this did, it allowed bloggers to find the golden triumvirate of marketing, which is the story, photos, and a video. So they found a simple video of me showing a book online on YouTube. And this then started to go wild around the world. And I started to get amazing emails from journalists who would write to me as Professor Sheridan Simove, even though I'm not a professor, I just put professor at the bottom of the book. <laughs> and they say to me, Professor Simove, we want to interview you about this amazing black book. And so it started to go wild, and as it went wild online, it then started to go up the Amazon chart. And eventually, it climbed to number 44 on the Amazon chart, which isn't bad, is it, for a blank book? It certainly isn't nothing. And you'll see there that above me is the secret. And of course, the secret to my book is don't put any words in it. Um, and I thought it couldn't get much better than that. I thought, wow, I've got a blank book to the, into the top 50 of the Amazon charts. That's, that's not bad, is it? But then it did get better, and it got stranger. And I received an email that I thought was a joke from one of my friends. And the email read this. It said, Dear Shed, we've seen your blank book, What Every Man Thinks About Apart From Sex. We think it's fantastic. We're publishers from Spain, and we want to translate it and pay you in advance. <laughs> I thought, no, that's my friend. And I, I looked at the footer, and actually, it all checked out. It was El Macanista, a very well-known publisher from Spain. And so, now, I've published in Spanish. <laughs> and what I did was, because I love adventure as much as um, cash, I, I said to them, you've got to fly me over for the launch of this. So I found myself at the Madrid Book Fair, launching my blank Spanish book, next to a woman who'd spent eight years on her fiction, and I was completely sold out. I felt, I just, I felt terrible. Um, it also got translated into Croatian. Incredible, I went to Croatia and the Netherlands, and I love the fact that the Dutch are slightly deviant, so they didn't use my cover. Brilliant. And in the end, it sold 80,000 copies. That's an eight times worldwide bestseller, which isn't bad, is it? And of course now, I'm working on the Amazon Kindle version, <laughs> and also the audiobook. Um, this whole iteration of taking an idea from another industry and applying it to yours goes on even in big business. And look at Tesco. Tesco are the biggest supermarket in the UK, and now they do insurance. So they've looked outside their core business and taken us in, and they even do pet insurance. I don't know where cats go on holiday. <laughs> Maybe Persia. It's terrible. Isn't it? um, but they do this, and they're doing it very successfully, and it's big business for them. So I'm going to wrap up and just say that inspiration is everywhere. It's all around us. And even today, when I was so chuffed to be invited to do a TEDx talk, 
I thought about the concept of a, of a talk, of a speech, and I thought about how speech and speech bubbles in my life have, have recently been prevalent. And it all started with last Mother's Day. I wanted to do something different for my mum instead of just send her a card. So I designed up a billboard that I wanted so that I could stand next to it. And I actually got it printed up. And there it is. And that's me outside the billboard. And of course, I made it so that anyone could then stand by it, take a photo and send it to their mum. And this was a big success. Not really a commercial success, but then I thought, OK, I'm going to just twist that idea very slightly. And I thought I wanted to bring it to life in 3D. So I made the prototype speech bubble balloon. And now I've made this, which is just out for Christmas. And um, they've come out really well. So you hold it up. And of course, because of the prevalence of camera phones, it's very easy. You hold it up, you have a photo, and then you can post it on Facebook or Twitter or send it to someone in the email. And it really works well. So now it's a 3D version of a speech bubble, and you've got LOL. You can do that. <laughs> it works really well. Um, another simple way I got inspired was from a cup of coffee. Um, just a normal object, but actually, I've always thought that the patterns that sometimes you get in those posh coffee shops are really fun and I wanted to do my own pattern so I just made up my own stencil. Here's my stencil, it's um, I spat in your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of the barista just giving it to someone, just not saying anything really because you'd, you'd be doubtful wouldn't you? So that's it really from me ladies and gentlemen, just to recap three ways to have a great idea. One, twist something already existing. Two, challenge or break a rule. And three, look at another industry. Look at something outside of your realm of experience and then take it into yours. And I just want to end and say, always remember how brilliant your brain is. And I've been Shed Simone. <laughs>